Hello everybody and welcome to this microeconomic video on the labour market. So firstly to our section in the top left. Now what you need to know is that just like any other good has a market, so for example the TV market or the computer market, labour, as in workers and the workforce, also have a market. So the first thing you need to know is that labour is derived demand. So this means that this is demand derived from the demand for the good. So if there is no demand for a good, then there is no demand for labour to produce that good. However, if there is high demand for that good, then there will be high demand for labour to produce that good. Also, without labour there is no supply, because if there is no labour force, there is, if there is no workforce to produce the good, then there cannot be any of that good, so therefore there can be no supply of it. Also, in terms of our supply and demand curves, on our y-axis where price was, this now represents the wage of the worker, the price of employing that worker. Next, into the top right, we have factors affecting the demand for labour, or labour demand. So firstly, I want to come to the two points in the top left and top uh, and bottom right. We have increased efficiency and technological efficiency. So basically, these mean if we have a machine that can produce 400 units in an hour, but my workers can only produce 300 units in an hour, then I'm going to go and buy the machine because it's more productive, it's more efficient, it's better for me. So therefore, if I have a machine that can replace five of my workers, then the demand for labour will be five less because I'm not demanding those five workers anymore. So if we have increased technological efficiency, there will be a lower demand for labour. Next point in the top right, we have demand for the good. We already discussed this. If the demand for the good is very low, then the demand for labour to produce it will also be low. And then our last two points affecting labour demand, we have the price of the other factors of production, so the price of land and the price of fixed and working capital, and the price of other workers, for example managers. So if I have to spend more money on land, working capital, fixed capital and other workers like managers, if these things are more expensive so I have to spend more money on them, that means I have less money to spend on actual workers, on the actual labour force, so therefore I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to employ as many of them, so therefore the demand for labour will be lower. Next, uh, one point I would like to add is that another factor affecting labour demand is actually a factor affecting labour supply, I've put it in the wrong place, and that is the minimum wage. If there is a high minimum wage, that means it's more expensive for businesses to employ workers, and this makes it unattractive for businesses to employ workers, so they won't employ them, so therefore the demand will be low. So if the minimum wage is high, the demand for labour will be low. So next we come on to our factors affecting supply of labour. So firstly, population structure. If we have lots and lots of young people, lots and lots of old people, and not many people in the middle, in the working age, that means we have a small workforce, so therefore a small, low supply of labour. The next point I'd like to come on to is, I'm a bit all over the place, these are a bit jumbled up today. The next point I'd like to come on to is migration. If we have lots of working age migrants, so by working age I sort of mean 25 to 45 or 55. If we have lots of migrants in that age group coming into the country, then we've got more and more workers coming into the country, so a bigger workforce, so therefore a greater supply of labour. The next point I'd like to come on to is trade union power. So if trade unions are very powerful, that means they can call lots of strikes. And every time there is a strike, the supply of labour decreases because workers are deciding they're not going to work. And the next two points I'd like to come to are the last two points, welfare benefits and income tax and national insurance contributions. And they kind of go together. By welfare benefits, I mean things like unemployment benefit. If unemployment benefit is high, then a worker will look at the unemployment benefit and say actually I can get quite a lot by doing nothing so therefore they will not go and find a job so therefore the supply of labour will be lower because they're not seeking a job and they're not part of the workforce and this, that's if welfare benefits are high also if income tax and national insurance contributions are high as well that means that you're going to be taxed more on the amount of money you earn so therefore overall at the end of the month you're left with less money and if this m amount of money is close to the amount you could be earning through welfare benefits, through unemployment benefits, you'll say, well, what's the point in working for an extra £200 when I could be doing nothing and take unemployment benefits? 
So if income tax and national insurance contributions are high, then less people work, so therefore the supply of labour will be low.